All right, so my friends, welcome to the Kamigawa Neon Dynasty Complete Set Review. That's right, we're doing every card constructed. We're doing limited. Going over all the cards, and uh, so you don't have to, basically. I'm going to talk to you about the cards. It's going to be great. And uh, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, watch on YouTube, with all the buttons. Let me know your thoughts on what you what cards you think are best. we got 10 new brews coming up. we got Bronze Amanda coming up. we got all sorts of stuff coming up. Piled up, pre-release. It's all there. It's all coming. Let's jump right in. We're not going to... Uh, we're not going to talk anymore. We're just going to talk lots of stuff. <laughs> a lot of words in these cards, folks. Uh, this is the most wordy set of all time. Most wordy set of all time. I'm, I'm going to do it for you all. I'm going to do it for you all. Let's go. Our first multicolor card here is a sorry Captain. We have five mana for a 4-3 Haste. And for a Samurai or Warrior you control attacks alone, it gets plus one, plus zero, and a turn for each other Samurai or Warrior you control. Uh, this card is the wrong way. If this card was a 3-4, I think it would be a lot better. Uh, but as a 4-3 haste that only pumps power, the haste ability is somewhat wasted because you don't want to throw away the good creature on the exalted ability. So this Samurai Warrior attack alone exalted ability is on a lot of cards. And it feels like the best way to use it is to attack with your crappy Samurai while your good Samurai pumps it up. So... Um, that's, that's that's a concern. So, with this thing having haste, you're going to attack with it as a 6-3 or 7-3, and let's block it, you know? So, <laughs> uh, so this card is, it's okay. It's not terrible, you know, but it's not super exciting because the body is just so small and unappealing. So, again, if it's, if it's like a 2-4, like a you know, or a 1-5 or something like that, but uh, I don't know. Obviously, you can just play it and not attack with it, but it doesn't block very well either, so uh, the stats on this card aren't really there for me. Uh, I believe this card is going to underperform uh, in your in your draft games. It's obviously not bad, but it's not particularly amazing either. Uh, yeah, seems just just okay, just okay. Moving on to Colossal Sky Turtle. Colossal Sky Turtle. Those are words that 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 you can put together in the same sentence, I guess. Uh, a blue four four. I'm sorry, a four, four, four. Oh my God. Oh. I'm good. I swear to God. Blue, green, green, and four for a six, five flying ward two. And uh, again, as I say with most of these channel cards, the important part is the channel effects, right? So you can channel this. You can channel for a three mana regrowth uncounterable or a two mana unsummon uncounterable. Now, that's kind of the important part uh, because... Seven mana for seven mana it, it, it gets you coma or gets you Karn or whatever ridiculous cards they have these days. So as a uh, a seven drop, this card's not super exciting. But as a uh, unsummoned uncountable is pretty good. Uh, Regrowth's pretty good. It does have ward. Um, I'm not sure if this card has a home though in the year 2022. If this card came out in like 2011, this card would have been awesome i think and like control decks is like a an incidental, incidental win condition kind of stuff like that uh but as it is it doesn't really do a ton of good things aside from the fact that it's a two mana uncounterable not spell bounce spell so it can bounce things like uh you know uh what's it called the dark depths token or whatever you know whatever important thing you just have to bounce um but yeah it, it is a pretty big honk and chunker well, I think you'll see some fringe play and constructed in, in like really weird spots. Uh, but overall, not really a card I think that you want to be uh, constructing. Kind of cute in living end, but you have to like actually have a target for it. Uh, but yeah, constructed super, super, super fringe. Limited honking, chonking bomb. Uh, most of the time, you're going to want to just cast this limited, but obviously flexibility is great. So good limited bomb. Constructed card, super, super fringe, but possible for sure. Uh, and I can't say this one. Iajano Uprising. We have a, a really weird card here. Um, the Samurai mechanic is all about Exalted. One creature attacking for lots of abilities. For some reason, this card makes a bunch of Samurai tokens that all want to attack together. So... Red, green, red, red, green, red, white, and X sorcery make X 2-2 two, two samurai tokens with vigilance. They gain menace and haste until end of turn. Each opponent makes X minus 1 2-2 two, two samurai tokens with vigilance. So 
You get one more token than they do, and yours have menace for a big attack. But you're still giving your opponent a whole bunch of resources here, you know? So, really, really weird card. Um, kind of cute. Obviously, you have like an Anthem in play or some way to pump things up. Or uh, an Elish Norn in play, sure. Um, or, uh, you know, uh, whatever you might... You know, if you have some way to break the uh, to break the symmetry of it, sure, I guess. But it just feels like a weird, a weird card, honestly. It's sort of like a fireball, but it can go wrong. I don't know. It is weird. Really weird card. Not really feeling it. In limited, it seems fine because you just like fireball and kill them. The fact that they have vigilance is very important. So they can't just like turn around and attack back and kill you. Your guys can also block. Uh, but yeah, it's probably fine and limited, honestly. But yeah, weird card. Weird card. Weird card. Up next is a goblin. Woo! What's here for goblins? Uh, enthusiastic Mechanaut. Blue, red, 2-2 two -two flyer. Pretty good, honestly. A 2-2 two -two flyer for, for two is not the worst. And then artifact spells you cast cost one less to cast. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Needs a deck for sure. But um, cost reduction here on a reasonably aggressive 2-2 two -two flyer. It's also an artifact. It's pretty sweet. Uh, card's cool. Not sure exactly what blue, red deck is going to want this card. But, uh, you know, commander decks for sure. I mean, for sure. This is going to be a huge commander card. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, but yeah, constructed wise, I'm not really uh, exactly sure where this one goes. But if it finds a home, it's definitely good enough to uh, to find a home for sure. So, and then limited is a great card. Two two five or two is great. Anything else is gravy. Solid, solid limited card. Up next is Gloom Shrieker. We have a Golgari three drop. It's a two one menace. When it ETBs, return a permanent card from your to your hand. If it would die, exile it instead. Obviously, phenomenal card. Uh, phenomenal limited card for sure. Uh, return sagas and creatures and things like that. And constructed wise, this card could see play. Um, it is only permanent cards. Can't return anything. So things have to die uh, to make this card return things. But when that does happen, it's pretty good. It's got menace. Uh, kind of a cool card. Kind of a cool card. Can't loop it, obviously. But card's reasonable. Constructed fringe possibilities. Great limited card. Like top level limited card. Top level limited card. Up next is Grease Fang Okiba Boss. We have our sleeper card here, folks. Uh, this is a Orzov 3 drop for a 4 3, which is pretty freaking big. Uh, beginning combat on your turn. Return a vehicle card from your graveyard to the battlefield. It gains haste. Return to its owner's hand at the beginning of your next end step. That's really good. Uh, so, at any vehicle. So, in theory, you could return Sky Sovereign. Uh, and then, of course, the 4-3 can crew almost anything. So, you return the vehicle, you crew the vehicle, you attack with it, get the benefit, and then it goes back to your hand. So, we have a well-rated creature, which is huge, uh, which is card advantage, as well as um, a powerful effect the board immediately effect. A Seeker's Chariot, probably one of the best, the best one available, you know. Uh, but very, very good card here. Uh, very, very good card. Uh this is just a rate card, right? This is sort of like the question of like, why is this card a three mana four three? That's huge. That's huge. And if you want to go crazy, there's the power helion, like the eight mana ridiculous, ridiculous uh, vehicle that like makes angels and crap. Uh, if you want to go off the wall? That's honestly not that crazy. As you, do, I think you get you get two angels if you do that. So this card's really good. It looks kind of silly, silly and weird, but there's a lot of rate here and a lot of power and not a lot of safeguards. Card's really good. That's sleeper for the set. Grease Fang, Okia Boss. Kind of sad this isn't like a, a black red goblin or something like that, but super cool. Super cool. Moving on. And then limited, obviously, just absolutely busted card. Limited. So four, three for three is already good enough. So up next is Hedetsu consumes all. We have the anti Lurus Mythic. Uh, Rakdos 3 Drop Saga. Chapter 1. Destroy each non land permanent with mana value 1 or less. Uh, so, all your good cards in older formats. Chapter 2. Exile all graveyards. Okay. Chapter 3. Flip it. And what do you get? You get the Vessel of the All Consuming, a 3 3 trample. No haste, don't forget. Whenever it deals damage, put a counter on it. If it deals uh, damage to a player, if it dealt 
10 or more damage that player this turn, they lose the game. That's flavor text. So this is basically just like your anti Luris card. Uh, now, of course, Luris is twos, not ones, but, you know, Dragon Race Channeler, Ragavan, Death Shadow, the Treasures, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, kind of an interesting pernicious DX card. Also very good against Hammer Time. Uh, real, real good here. Kill their Mem Knight, their Spring Weave Drum, their, uh, their Esper Sentinel, and so on and so forth. Pretty powerful. Graveyard's kind of cool also. So, also good in Historic as well. The uh, Galari Food, Cat Oven, etc. This card's going to see play. Uh, it's going to be a card that's much, much better at older formats. It's a little more of a, a specific card. More of a sideboard card, but older format sideboard card. Definitely looking for it. And then, um, and even even like Vintage or something like that. You know, it's like kill three of their Moxes, you know, and their whatever, Soul Ring, and like exile their Graveyard. Probably maybe not that far, but the card's good. The card's good. Uh, better in older formats, card to watch. In Limited, not very good, honestly, because it doesn't really do anything in the first two steps, and the, and the, the Chapter 3 is kind of okay. Probably won't see play in Standard and stuff like that either, but um, card's cool. Card's cool. I like it. Up next is uh, High Nata, Dawn Crowned. We have a Jeskai 4-drop. It's a 4-4. Four four. It's a Flying Trample Kieran Spirit. So a 4-4 four four Flyer. 4-4 four, four Flying Trample for 4 is certainly fine, you know, if nothing else. Spells you cast cost 1 less to cast for each target. Spells your opponents cast cost 1 more to cast for each target. This is a this is a, a commander card. You know, you can play Fireball. I can't pronounce this. I'm sorry, all right? I'm trying. Give me a style guide or something like that. I'm doing my best, all right? I don't watch anime. I'm mildly dyslexic. Leave me alone. You're all making fun of me. I'm just doing my best. Come on. I'm okay. I'm okay. Don't want to check it to you, Jim. You can do it. You can do this. I believe in myself. I'm great. I can do it. So, more of a commander card. Uh, you know, like you can, like fireball and like I up you know make your cost less or whatever. Um, not a constructed card. Just doesn't really do anything constructed. But cool commander card. Bomb and limited if you can cast it. Cause it's just, it's just huge. But more of a casual commander card than anything else. Which is cool. Which is cool. Invigorating Hot Spring is next. And uh, trying to make Fires you have Maya happen once again. And this might actually do it. Three mana for enchantment. ETBs have four plus plus encounters on it. Modified creatures have haste. You can remove a counter from this to put a counter on a creature you control. Only the sorcery and once a turn. So this card's actually pretty good. Uh, we've seen, like, Fires you have Maya was a tournament card 25 years ago. Uh, but... Not really uh, in modern day magic, you know. We saw the Riot Gruel version of this card. It was terrible. Uh, just absolutely awful. But this is kind of just like the best of both worlds. Because this gives you the counters and the haste. And you can even use it for turn you cast it. So I play a two drop. I play this on three. Put a counter on two drop and attack. And then next turn, the next thing has haste also. And then in limited, this is... Uh, this is able to modify all your stuff. Just modifying stuff everywhere. This is definitely the, the signpost uncommon uh, for Gruul in Limited. And it seems insanely good in Limited. Uh, insanely, insanely, insanely good. And then Constructed, maybe. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put a big maybe on this card. Um, it's probably still not good enough. Uh, but the effect is reasonable enough. There's a lot of power here as far as, adding, you know, as the haste, adding counters. Being able to augment the thing you already played. Uh, card's cool. Card's cool. We've seen a lot of uh, Fires of Maya variants that have been awful. This one might actually not be awful. Which isn't really the best, uh, you know, whatever. But sure. Whatever. Sure. Moving on. Uh, Ishin. Two Heavens as one. A Mardu Legendary Samurai. It's a 3-4. So decent sized. If a creature attacking causes a triggered ability of a permanent you control to trigger... That ability triggers an additional time. So this is like the the exalted samurai lord, but it's also black, uh, which is really weird. I don't I don't know what this card does honestly. Instructed, uh, very hard to cast. Needs to have other things. Doesn't actually do anything by itself. This feels like a, a straight commander plant. Um, it's a cool commander card, but in constructed does nothing by itself and doesn't really do anything. So more of a commander card. Pretty cool. In limited, you can cast it. This card is good. Uh, there are common dual lands, so splashing this card into your your uh, Boros deck is reasonable. Uh, but 
Yeah, it's, I don't know, it's a fun card, whatever. Jukai Naturalist, 2 mana for a 2-2 with lifelink. Enchantment spells you cast cost one less to cast. This is a good card. Uh, this is a good, good card. Uh, a 2-2 lifelink for two is reasonable. It's an enchantment, and it's a mana creature for all your future enchantments. Uh, while also getting life, this can make your auras cost less uh, to go on this for uh, for lifelink. Great card. Great card. We'll see playing instructed. Great limited card. Uh, it's really good. It's really, really good. Up next is Kaito Shizuki. And uh, bang. I think this card is really, really good. This is a 3-mana Planeswalker that defends itself the turn you play it. So you cast this card, we can up the loyalty to 4, and then we can have it phase out for that all-important first turn, which is huge. Uh, the big thing about Planeswalkers is you need to be able to untap with them when they aren't good. And this card does a really, really good job of that. This is not a typical Planeswalker, though. This is not like an Ashiok or an Elspeth or just like, you know, blah, 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 kill, 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 play a Planeswalker, plus, plus, blah, blah, blah. This is a Planeswalker that wants to go more in an aggressive deck because you want the first ability to be able to uh, draw cards, not discard cards, which is awesome. So the fact that this is going to be a really cool tool for the aggressive decks to give them a, a sticky threat, a card draw engine is super awesome. Uh, this makes tokens, this draws cards. Uh, this is like the card. If like ninjas is a, is a deck, this is the card that makes it a deck and it feels very, very good. Um, just seems great. Just seems like a really good card. Again, three mana planeswalkers are often good anyway. Uh, this card's great. Likes card a lot. Super, super good. I'm all about it. In limited, it's obviously broken. Uh, card's great. I cannot wait to cast this card. I'm pretty excited also this card might go into my cube. Um, which is because there aren't many, uh, there isn't really a Demir planeswalker that's good. So card's super sweet. Like it a lot. Like it a lot. Super cool card. Super cool card. Moving on to the Kami War. And uh, anyone else hate that this card doesn't just, doesn't just cost Wooberg? Like, that one pisses me off. Anyone else? YouTube comment of the day. Is that that little one piss you off? It pisses me off. So, Wooberg plus one. Very unesthetically pleasing. We have a saga here. Saga says, chapter one, exile target non-land permanent and opponent controls. That's good. Uh, that's good. That's, you know... Very, very good effect. Exiling is also great. Uh, just really, really good. Chapter 2. Return up to one other target non-land permanent to its owner's hand. Then each opponent discards a card. That's also very good. So we have early card advantage here. We kill one thing, then we bounce a thing, and then discard a card. That's great. Chapter 3. Flips over to Oka... Oga... Okag... Oka... Oh, I'm going to try whatever. Made Manifest... Uh, which is a 6-6 six, six Dragon Spirit. It's all colors. It's got Flample. Whenever it attacks, defending player chooses a non-land card in your graveyard. Return that card to your hand. Okagachi. Okagachi. Uh, Oka Okagachi made manifest. Gets plus X plus O. So on turn, X is that mana value of that card. Uh, so, pretty powerful card. Uh, I, I'm honestly... I think that the color symbol is kind of a red flag where I'm sure... Ooh, what was that? Uh, I'm sure that Wizards of a Coast wanted this card to cost Wooberg, but it was probably too good and they had to up the cost by one, which is the mark of a, probably a really good card. So this card's good. It's five colors. That's hard to play, obviously, but the card advantage here is very similar to Elspeth Elf, Elf Conqueror's Death or something like that with the end... Chapter just being a 6-6 six, six flying tremble, which is pretty good too. Um, I'm sure I'll play this card in something. This card's super sweet. I like it a lot. Um, it's powerful. It's powerful. Good stuff. I like it. I like it. Moving on to uh, Katos, the Silent Spider. This is a legendary ninja. 5 mana Demir for a 4-4. Four, four. Oh my god. Hold on. Hold on. Here we go. Here we go. When the Silent Spider enters the battlefield, exile a target card other than a basic land card from a, an opponent's graveyard. Okay, search the player's graveyard hand and library for any number of cards the same name as that card. Exile them. Then that player shuffles. For as long as you control uh, this, you may play one of the exiled cards and you may spend mana as there are mana many cards to cast it. 
I, I can't deal with this shit, you know? I'm trying to do my damn set review. We're, we're almost done. There's like 50 lines in this card. All right, one more time, one more time. When the ETBs exile a card on the basic land from the opponent's graveyard, search out those like hand, library, and whatever for any of the cards of the same name and exile them. Then that player shuffles. For as long as you control this card, you may play one of the exiled cards and you may spend mana as though... So you can, you can keep playing all of them. So like, sure... So you exile a lightning bolt, it's only one. So the, so you exile the, the all of them and you can play the one and the rest are just stay exiled. It's a weird card. It's a weird card. I mean like a four four with your surgical attraction is like fine, I guess, but this card just doesn't seem very good to me. Obviously it's super cute if you like ninja it and like keep casting it over and over and over again. Uh but for five mana, um, not super exciting. Uh, the cards are gone forever, so you know they, if they kill it, you still get to lose the thing. But uh, yeah, just kind of a weird card. Uh, I mean, constructed wise, like surgical effects just aren't good unless you're like neutering their deck completely or the, the graveyard hate matters. So this card sucks. I don't know, I'm not about it. <laughs> Ephemerate's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. But yeah, I'm not really big about it. And they also also have to have the card already in the graveyard. So. Yeah, I mean, this could, this could be, like, a bring to light kind of card. It's, like, a one-of, like, a weird, like, tutor target, but just, like, a whatever card. And limited is just, like, fine. You just, like, get to play a 4-4, steal their thing, and then cast it, which is fine. But, yeah, not a not a great card. Up next is uh, Naomi, Pillar of Order. Five mana auras of 4-4, which is fine. Over attacks or ETBs, you if you control an enchantment and an artifact, you get a 2-2. Two -two. Good card. Obviously, you need to meet the condition here. Uh... This is the, uh, I have to have an enchantment and an artifact condition, but if you meet it, it's very, very good. Uh, it's very, very good. Uh, making it 2-2 every turn is awesome. Cool card. Uh, definitely needs to be met as far as deck building wise and limited, but it's a cool, cool limited card. Cool limited card. All right. Up next is Ani Cult Anvil. Rakdos Artifact. Whenever one or more artifacts you control, leave, leave the battlefield during your turn. Make it 1-1 token. Only once turn. Tap, sacrifice an artifact, and uh, it'll deal one damage to each opponent. You gain one life. So, if nothing else, this is just like, make an artifact, sack an artifact, make an artifact. So, it drains for one every turn. Um, but this feels kind of similar to, um, what's it called? Hidden Stockpile, where you can sort of like, you just, you're just sacrificing things, getting a token here and there. Um, kind of a cool sack outlet. I don't know. Just like... I don't feel like it's doing enough. I did see that, that uh, Carmen Handy, who works for Watsy now, tweeted about this card, and she said that, like, this card was, like, her favorite card in the Future Future League, which means it's like, probably pretty good, but I, I feel like it's the kind of card you need to, like, see in play to really get, like, a feel for it. So, this card's probably pretty cool, but uh, we'll see. We'll see, yeah. Yeah, like, Hidden Stockpile effects, kind of cool. It's cool with Bloods. It's kind of cool. It's kind of cool. Kind of cool. And Limited, probably not. Um... Probably not, but I don't know. Seems cool. I'm not sure. Weird card. Fun weird card. Up next is Prodigy's Prototype. We have an Azorius 3-drop. It's a 3-4. It's a vehicle. Whatever one or more vehicles you control, attacks. Make a 1-1 a one -one Pacullus Pilot token with it can crew things power uh, as if its power were 2 or greater, and it crews for 2. Uh, this card's good. Good signpost uncommon for your, uh, your Azorius draft deck your vehicle deck, where you get to just uh, keep making tokens. The big thing about vehicles in Limited is going to be making sure you have enough things to actually crew them. Uh, if you can get that goal done, then the, the vehicles are pretty good. And this this card does a great job of making sure that happens. So I think this is a, a top flight Limited limited Uncommon. Constructed, probably not, but in Limited, super, super cool. Super, super cool. Thanks, Corey. I appreciate it. Have a good night. Thanks, Rib. Ryu Storm's Edge. We have a Boros 3-3 three, three with First Strike. Again, this is our uh, this is our uh, Exalted Samurai Warrior effect here. Whenever a Samurai Warrior attacks alone, untap it. An additional combat phase happens. Uh, great card for Limited. Great bomb for Limited. 3-3 uh, three, three First Strike, great ability. This is the card you want in your, your Boros Samurai deck. Constructed, no. It's not good enough. Size is just too small. But for Limited, great card. Great card. Rizzoni. Rizona. Azari Commander. We have a 3-3 three, three for 3 with Haste, which is pretty good. Whatever does combat damage to a player, if it, doesn't have an, if it doesn't have an indestructible counter on it, it gets one. If your combat damage is dealt to you, remove that counter. 
This card is really cool. Uh, I like this card a lot. And this card is definitely constructed playable because against control decks, uh, you just have a 3-3 haste interruptible because they're never, they're never going to attack you. So you play this, they're tapped out, get a counter on it, and now they're probably not attacking you. So you just have this hasting samurai interruptible card in play, which is pretty sweet. Uh, and then also, a 3-3 three, three haste for three is just about there on rate. Like, that's, like, pretty good. You know, Boggart, Ram like Rami Yang and friends. So, pretty cool card. Dodges, the, dodges, dodges Vanishing first, which is also a, a big deal for sure. Uh, card sweet. Like it a lot. Not incredible. Not, like, a world-breaking, like, oh, my God, this card's insane. But definitely can see play constructed. And then very solid limited card, too. Very solid limited card, too. Satoru Umezawa. Three mana, Demir, two, four. Whenever you activate a Nujutsu ability, look at the top three cards of your library, put one of them onto your hand, and the rest of the bottom of your library, only once a turn. Each creature card you control in your hand has Nujutsu. Ember cool, anyone? Eh? Woo! But, uh, yeah, this is kind of like a, a, a fun Mimi card. Card's not very good. Uh, it's a two, four, you play it, it doesn't actually do anything. So, right off the bat, for Constructive, it's, like, pretty, uh, pretty awful. Um... Yeah, you could, in theory, like, ninja in a Blightsteel or whatever, which is kind of cute. But, realistically, this is like a... Uh, you know, this is not really... This card isn't really doing anything that the ninja deck wants to do. The ninja, ninja deck wants to be super cheap, super efficient, have things come in, removal spells, you know, draw cards, keep things going. This card is a slow, clunky card that relies on other cards to be good. And you don't... All your cards should already have ninja. You know, like, you don't shouldn't need to give them ninja. So, yes, if you ninja an, an Ember Cool, it will not Annihilate her. That is true. I know. I'm just picking a, a dumb card off the top of my head that's expensive. So, uh, yeah. It's a cute card. It's a fun card. For limited, sure. Card's great limited. You know, you have time to draw cards off of it. Uh, if you draw one card off this, that's great. But, constructed-wise, the art's really cool. That's about it. That's about it. Up next is Satsuki, the Living Lore. Celestia 2 drop for a 1-3. Tap to put a lore counter on each saga you control, only at sorcery speed. That's pretty cool. Uh, so you can speed your sagas up, obviously. Whenever it dies, choose one. Turn a saga card or enchantment creature to you control with its owner's hand, or turn a saga card from your graveyard to your hand. Uh, so, if there's a saga deck, this is the card you want. I mean, it's, uh, it's a good enabler. It speeds things up. Return Sagas when it dies. You know, uh, it's a super cool card. Assuming that Sagas are, you know, like a playable archetype in, in Constructed. If they're not, this card won't do anything. But if they are, certainly very playable. Uh, good limited card. You know, clearly the green-white uh, mechanic is focused on, focused on, uh, on Sagas and enchantments and stuff like that. So, body's fine. Uh, it doesn't, doesn't die super easily. So, card's cool. Card's cool. Up next is Silver Fur Master. Kind of a funny card here. Uh, this is your Ninja Lord. Demir 2 drop. Uh, it, it's a lord for all your ninjas and rogues. It's Master Splendor. Uh, it has the Jitsu, but doesn't act, actually do anything. Um, almost all ninjas have like a come into play ability or a, a on damage ability. This you can ninja in. I guess you can do it as like a, a pump effect for your other ninjas, which I guess is like a reasonable thing, but like not your usual uh, thing. It also does not give turtles plus almost one, which is kind of bullshit. Uh, kind of bullshit. Mesh Splinter, what's up? What's up? It's also, it is also a Rogue Lord, too. So if you're playing Rogues, Elder Formants as well, it's kind of a cool thing, too. Uh, but yeah, it also makes your your ninja abilities one cost one less to activate. Most of the good ones cost one anyway, though. So if there's a ninja deck, this card might go into it. But I think that the ninja deck is going to be more focused on just trying to play a ninja, ninja spell kind of game. This is more of like an all-creature kind of game. So I'm a... Uh, I don't know. I think this card's probably a great limited card, but probably not good enough for Constructed. Uh, probably not good enough. Oh, God, there's so many words. Up next is Spirit Sister's Call. Five mana Orzhov Enchantment Mythic. At the beginning of your end step, choose target permanent card in your graveyard. You may sacrifice a permanent that shares a card type with the chosen card. If you do, return the chosen card from your graveyard to the battlefield, and it gains, if this permanent would leave the battlefield... Exile it instead of putting it anywhere else. So you can sack a creature to reanimate something. So kind of like a cute card. Um, you discard a big fatty, have a creature in play, you can sacrifice that and get your uh, other creature. 
and so on and so forth. The fact that it triggers end step is huge. This is an upkeep trigger. It's completely unplayable, like a thousand times unplayable. The fact that you can use it a turn you play it is pretty cool. Uh, so this is definitely a, a kind of a cool card. It feels almost like recurring nightmare-esque, where you want to be able to have things in play, things in your graveyard, and start swapping stuff out back and forth. Kind of cool. Um, and the fact that it can, it can do Planeswalkers or artifacts or whatever, you can just sack a Planeswalker or an artifact. That's like a thing you can do. But um, that's kind of cool. And then you can sack an enchantment to get sack this back to an enchantment, which is kind of cool. It's a little clunky, uh, but kind of a cool build around card. Uh, constructed could could see play. I think this card could see play. Constructed definitely kind of a cool card. And in limited, I mean, unless you're like going saga crazy and you can like keep recurring sagas or whatever. But uh, but yeah, that kind of weird card. It's a cool one. It's a cool build around. It's a cool build around. Pretty fun. Pretty fun. Tamio! Oh god, no, Tamio! What have they done to you? Hello, darkness, my old friend. I should have a We Are the Borg sound drop. Ha, uh, we are the Borg. But uh so Tamio is a Borg now. No! Yes. However, Tamio is also uh our trap card for the multicolored section. Uh a lot of hype around Tamio just because like it's a big story beat. Um, you know, corrupting a planeswalker, kind of a big deal. But this card kind of sucks. Uh, I don't think this card's very good at all. So we have a... Oh. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jim. Welcome to the set review. It's a trap. You don't, you don't know why I play the sleep animation? Because I want to go to sleep. Uh, I want to go to sleep. That's why. So um, Tamio uh, is a five mana planeswalker. Comes up with a five loyalty. Or it's a four mana planeswalker for two life, but then it only has three loyalty. That's a major, major downside. Uh, three is not much. So assuming that you're gonna be playing the two life most of the time, because you don't wanna have a, a five mana Planeswalker. So a four mana Planeswalker, three loyalty, comes into play. It has the Tamio tap ability from the original Tamio. Uh, it taps one thing and freezes it, which is pretty good. Uh, which is pretty good. You know, it definitely locks things down, but it's it's fine. You know, it's not great, but fine. It can defend itself, can lock one thing down. It can minus X to exile target non-land permanent card with mana value X or less or X from your graveyard. Create a token on the copy of that card. So that's like fine, but requires you to have desirable things in your graveyard and ready to go also. So like, that's already another hoop to jump through. And you get this permanence. Say you exile, I don't know, whatever, freaking uh, a Seeky's Chariot. It's like a really good one, right? Sure. Can't even do it at first. It only, only has, three, only has three, three, three loyalty to start. Uh, and then, like, it's not even that good. I don't know, whatever. It's not very good. You know, the, the, the minus X is just not very good. And if you don't cast it for five, you only have three loyalty to work with, which isn't very good either. So... Not super, uh, not super pumped there. And the ultimate is create Tamio's notebook, legendary colorless artifact token with spells you cast cost two less to cast, and tap a draw card. I mean that's good, but getting the ultimate's like not the the the, the card. That's not the, the game breaker for your planeswalkers, you know. So I think cast for five. This card is like okay, but this card's pretty freaking bad. Um, you know what blue green deck really wants this card? Uh, I don't know. You know, it feels like it's mostly playing for the ultimate. That's a real bad place for your Planeswalker to be. So, I think this card's mostly unplayable. Um, not really about it. And then, honestly, funny enough, it makes the notebook. That's not an emblem. Most ultimates make emblems, which are unkillable. It's just an artifact. They can just shatter it, you know, or whatever, you know? So, I don't know. Tamiya seems pretty bad to me. Um, I doubt this card will see much play, if any. Uh, just like, just not about it. It's not about this card. Sorry, Tamio. It's so sad. Tamio, not like it's freaking, you know, basically killed and reanimated as a freaking Borg, but her card also sucks. Just, uh, it's a real, uh, it's a real, it's a real tragedy. Real tragedy. Real tragedy. That's it. We ended up, we ended on a low note. Ended on a low note there. Tamio's our last multicolored card. YouTube folks, love you. Like, comment, subscribe. Let me know your thoughts. What's the best card here in multicolor? What's the worst card? You tell me, all right? Uh, look for the last video coming up. Love you, YouTube. You're great.